<laughs> That's like the start of the video. <laughs> hey y'all, it's your girl Jimmy, and welcome back to my channel. As many of you know, today is the fifth anniversary of Knight's very, very unexpected death. So in honor of him and to celebrate him and to keep the promise that I made to him at his funeral to forever tell his stories, I have decided to just make a video talking about me and him from the beginning to the end. I've never really talked about a bunch of these things. Some of these stories you might have heard before, like me donating all of his clothes to charity. And some of these stories you've never heard. So I am just going to tell our story very honest, very truthfully. And all I want from this video is for y'all to remember Knight, share a story about him in the comments to one of your friends. Have a seven and seven for him. That's all I want. So let's get started from the beginning. I remember when I arrived at the Real World House, um, me and Preston were the first two roommates to arrive. And from the very beginning, all I wanted to do was to go in the real world and party. I just wanted to live my best 21 year old life. I never expected day one walking into the real world house that I would immediately have a crush on this white boy that played hockey from Wisconsin. But that's exactly how it happened. From day one, the moment Knight walked into that house, I can still picture the shirt he was wearing. It was tacky as fuck. I just was drawn to him in ways that I can't even describe. So that's my very first memory of Knight is why is his shirt so tacky and why do I kind of find him attractive? He's the furthest thing from my type. He definitely tried to hook up with me night one, but I'm a classy girl and waited like a week. But from the moment we moved in that real world house, it was instant attraction. It was pretty much an instant relationship, a very, very fucked up, for a better lack of a word, relationship. But it was a relationship, I think, from the moment we met. Um, that's the thing about filming and living in a house. A week feels like a month. A month feels like a year. So everything definitely just went nonstop from the beginning. So anyone that watched The Real World knows that Knight and I were nonstop crazies. And by crazies, I mean me. Like that time that he had to hide from me in the shower. He called himself Anne Frank. I really appreciated that joke, even though it was about me. So yeah, just from the beginning, it I knew it was something I'd never experienced before. And I think anyone filming the show with us, the production, everyone saw what y'all all saw from the beginning. I don't really have to say that much about me and Knight living in the real world house together because you all saw it. You watched the highs, the lows, and everything in between. So I will just say this about falling in love on a reality TV show on the real world. It's the last fucking thing I wanted to happen, but it's exactly what happened. Um, and I don't think I could have had a better real world experience. And I'm very thankful that Knight walked through that door that day. So, Knight and I have had this fun, exciting real world experience, but like what happens when you leave the real world house and go to the real world? He lives in Wisconsin, I was still living in Mississippi at the time, like we had no idea what to expect and what was going to come of this bubble relationship that we were living in, because we were literally about to leave the real world and go to the real, real world. So, I think we made it about a week. Him being in Mississippi, I mean, yeah, we made it about a week of me being in Mississippi and him being in Wisconsin till he flew down. We drove to New Orleans and that's how we moved in together. People always think it's this big story about leaving the real world house and moving in together, but with us it just like kind of accidentally happened. He came to visit me in Mississippi, we decided to come to New Orleans to hang out for a few days and we stayed. I think that people always wonder if like Knight and I's relationship outside of the real world house was as crazy as it was in the house. And I would be lying to you if I didn't say in the beginning, yeah, it was the same. It was, it was never a normal relationship. Anyone that knows us knows that. So we moved in together in May of 2010. 
We stopped filming in April, moved in together in May. The show starts airing in June. And if you want to be tested in a relationship, you watch a reality show with your boyfriend when he wasn't your boyfriend. And like, I remember we would get in so many fights about the things that we said about each other in our interviews or to other roommates. So there, it was completely insane watching the show air together, living together in a relationship because we were not nice to each other sometimes, but we got past it. So post filming, Nine and I move in together. Where else should we continue the love story than where it all went down? New Orleans. And our life becomes an absolute roller coaster. The show's airing. Everyone's team Jimmy and team Knight. It's just like the craziest experience that I can't even put into words. And the funny thing is everyone supported us. Like I can't stress enough how much people loved us together. But we had so many fights watching those episodes. He would say something rude about me. I would talk shit about him. Like, I honestly wish people could just have seen us watching the real world together as a couple. Because the drama that came from just watching it together is some of the craziest fights that we probably experienced. But we always made up. We couldn't stay mad at each other long. And the roller coaster that was our relationship continued. This is a story that I haven't really talked about a lot, but I wouldn't be doing us justice if I didn't tell the truth. So flash forward to Christmas 2010. Like I said, Knight and I are living together in New Orleans. The show is still airing. And we decide we're going to spend Christmas in Wisconsin. So he's like, I'm going to go home a few days before, and then I'll fly you out. We'll spend Christmas with my dad my family. Sounds great. I love Wisconsin. I love spending like time with his family. So night goes, and keep in mind, we're living together. We're in a full-fledged relationship. And he stops answering my phone calls. I'm like, hey, when, is my, when am I going to get my flight to Wisconsin? Like, Christmas is two days away. Like, what's good? He lit. I cannot believe I'm telling y'all this, and I can't believe we were living together, and I can't believe I put up this shit. But it's like looking back, it's one of my favorite night stories. Now that I'm over it, um, but yeah, long story short, he abandoned me on Christmas, y'all. He never answered my phone calls. He never booked my flight. I literally don't know how our relationship survived this, but he abandoned me on Christmas. And then, right before New Year's, he calls and he wants to come home because y'all know every man always wants to come home after they've done their dirt. So, he comes home, and I think this was the first, like, huge problem, roadblock in our relationship because nothing gets past me. Y'all all know this. And I put two and two together. It's not that hard. Mike was not that smart when it came to cheating on me. And I found out that he had been hooking up with his ex-girlfriend over Christmas, and that's why he abandoned me on Christmas. And like looking back on it, like we were 21, 22 years old, we were so young, like I immediately took him back. I never once like doubted taking him back. Like it, looking back, I get mad at myself, but also like we were kids, like, it is what it is, and the relationship continued, and it was good. That's when we ended up getting our little dog, Whiskey, the pit bull. Insert cute photo of Knight and Whiskey. Um, and like I said, we were way too young to be living together. It was the whirlwind of filming a show, and there were so many ups and so many downs, but what I learned from all of these moments that I have with him are probably the most important lessons I've learned in my life. So life goes on, flash forward from Christmas to summer. We moved to Boca Raton for the summer. We had this beautiful summer in Florida. I mean, it was just, we literally just went to the beach every day to see the dog to the beach. It was like a beautiful, beautiful summer. It was like, I should have known that that was the coming of the end, but I was young and didn't know. So we moved back to New Orleans around Labor Day of 2011. Got a new apartment, um, 
felt very adultish, felt like, okay, we've been off of TV for a little while, we haven't done a challenge yet, maybe we can adjust to real life and just be a normal, real couple that's not on television, who knows where life is going to take us. Well, it was the end of the relationship. And it all started with him going back to Wisconsin. And this, I like talking about it now, it's funny, but this was like one of the hardest parts of my life. But again, I'm so thankful for that relationship and night because he taught me so much. And so much of that relationship is why I am the way that I am now in relationships. So I'm forever grateful for this story. Um, so Knight decides to go home to spend a few days with his dad prior to a wedding that we were supposed to attend in Wisconsin. Flashback to Christmas. It sounds very familiar, doesn't it? So long story short, Knight goes home. Stops answering my phone calls, stops texting me, and I'm like, bro, we live together. We're in a relationship. You can't act like this. I go into spy mode. Um, I notice that his ex-girlfriend's best friend, I still hate this girl to the day, not the ex-girlfriend, the best friend, um, was posting photos of Knight and his ex on Facebook. And I'm like, the blatant disrespect. But you know Knight, anyone that knows him knows that he was good with his words. Talked himself out of it, he thought. He thought we were all good. Um, still, it's been like a week or two now. He still hasn't come home. So I do what any crazy girlfriend would do. I go to AT&T and I get the phone records. And I see that there's a, a Wisconsin number that I don't notice. I know his sister's number. I know his dad's number. I know his stepmom's number. Whose number is this, honey? So I pick up the phone and call it. His ex-girlfriend answers. Um... She has a whole different version of my and I's relationship at the time. He's telling her that we're broken up. He's moving back to Wisconsin. I'm like, this motherfucker. So again, being the crazy girlfriend that I was, we get night on three-way. And this was when I realized that me and Knight were probably going to be breaking up for good. Um, it was hard. I was 22 years old. Very, very in love, as all of you saw. Um... But it was one of those things that you live and you learn, and he wasn't ready to be fully committed. I was way too young for it. So looking back, it was a blessing in disguise. At the time, I was a crazy bitch. Um, the story is true. Um, Knight did have all of his clothes donated to a homeless shelter, courtesy of me. I'm like, honey, if you're going to cheat on me and not come home, then all your clothes are going to the shelter. Good luck. Um, I did keep a few of his things. I do like his Blackhawks attire. Um, so yeah, that was the end of Jimmy and Knight as a couple. And this was October of 2011. And like looking back, we only met in January of 2010. So we were really only in a relationship for a year and a half. But we spent every day together in that year and a half, minus the times that he was in Wisconsin cheating on me. So it just felt like it was years. Like I had known him my whole life. And until you've been in that relationship, type of relationship where you meet someone and it immediately feels a connection, I can't even describe it. It's just one of those things either you have the joy of experience in life or you don't. And I'm very thankful that I did. So you think, okay, y'all broke up. He cheated on you. You're in New Orleans. He's in Wisconsin. You know, everything's done. I mean, anyone that knows me and I know that before we were – before we were a couple, we were always best friends. So we still talked occasionally. There would be times where he would drunk call me, I would drunk call him. But from the time that we broke up in October of 2011, I did not lay my eyes on him until April of 2012 when we went to film Battle of the Seasons. So our first challenge together, we've been waiting to do a challenge. It was two years in the making. But our first challenge together, not only are we going to be partnered together, we're going to be partnered with two of our roommates, Battle of the Seasons, Mackenzie and Preston. And I was like, this is the worst challenge scenario that could ever happen to me. I'm partnered with my ex-boyfriend who I haven't seen in six plus months and my and two roommates that I don't want to be here because we all know I'm with Ashley. So... It's so funny. My favorite part of Battle of the Seasons was actually Trishel, another Trishel story. She was the biggest Jimmy and Knight advocate 
in that house every day she would have hearts to heart with him hearts to heart with me Trishel so badly wanted me and Knight to get back together as did probably 85% of the house as did all the viewers watching but as y'all know we never got back together even though we filmed Battle of the Seasons together and then Rivals 2 fun fact Knight was supposed to be on free agents with me um, but he got kicked off for punching Frank at the Rivals 2 reunion so that's why he wasn't on free agents. A lot of people don't know that. Fun fact. Um, and then flash forward. It's what everyone's kind of been waiting for. Battle of the Exes. We're partnered together again. We're back in a challenge house. And this is going to be the last memories that I have of him. And I don't even realize it. But these are some of the best memories. Um, it finally felt like. We could really, really be friends again without the complications of the past of the relationship. So I am so thankful for the short time that we had on Battle of the um, Exes. He gets hurt. No one knows that. During that elimination, he got hurt. So that's why we weren't part of the exile that they did that season. Um, so our, our time was short-lived on Battle of the Exes. If I could have one, I guess, wish, it was like we could have spent a little more time there. Just have a little bit more time considering what the next few months we're gonna hold. Everyone always asks me my last memory of night or our last time that we spent together. It was actually when we got eliminated from Battle of the Exes. We flew from Panama to Atlanta together. Fun fact, we did get to fly first class since he got hurt. Um, thank you MTV for that. And I'm very grateful for these memories because, I mean, we got drunk together in first class. I remember I made him listen to Taylor Swift. We were never, ever getting back together a hundred times. Like, the whole entire flight, we literally just got drunk and listened to that song. Um, and I'm just thankful that our last memory together felt very much like the beginning, if that makes sense. Just two friends getting drunk together on seven and sevens. I'm so thankful that he introduced me to 7 and 7s. I never had one until I met him, and now it's my favorite liquor drink. So he gave me a lot of good things. 7 and 7 is top of the list. So we go our separate ways. It was Labor Day weekend, 2014. And, you know, we're like, all right, we'll see each other at the reunion. We'll see each, we'll see each other at some point. We had just filmed a season together. We had MTV stuff that was going to be coming up. I expected to see him, you know, in the next few months somewhere. Um, and then November of 2014 happened, and as many of you know, we lost Dion. And Dion was the heartbeat of the Challenge family. There was no one like Dion, so that was hard for anyone. People that hadn't even met Dion knows the impact of her. So losing her was, it took a toll on a lot of people, and we... We had just been in Panama with her. I mean, as many of you know, she wanted so badly to compete and win with CT that season. Unfortunately, she got sick and had to be helicoptered out of Panama back to New York. And from that point on, you know, she had been fighting in the hospital the whole time. But then Dion dies and everyone's just shook. And Knight took it really hard. He had like such a special place for Dion. He loved that girl. I think that he wanted me and him to be a lot like CT and Dion. He saw a lot of himself in CT. Me and Dion were both these two girls that just really truly believed in these bad boys. So I think that he saw so much light in Dion as everyone else did. So he took that very hard. And I, I never really talked about that. He never talked about it because as many of you know, two weeks later, um, people go out on Thanksgiving Eve Thanksgiving Eve is one of the biggest party nights, if not the biggest party nights in America. Everyone goes out. Um, Knight went out with his friends. And he partied, as he always did. And he unfortunately did not make it through the night. Um, he was with his best friend when it happened. I find a lot of um, peace in that. They have been best friends forever. It's the best guy ever. So I find a little peace in that. You have to find peace where you can. So flash forward to Thanksgiving morning. I wake up. I, my mom is actually 
the universe and God and whatever you believe in works in special ways. My mom had actually been um, moved down to New Orleans to do a job assignment for a few months. So she was living in New Orleans. This is just the universe taking care of people when it needs to be taken care of. My mom was living in New Orleans at the time, so I woke up at her house. I had the weirdest feeling that morning. I just remember being like, feeling guilty, like very thankful. Like I feel like my life has been very blessed and I should be thankful on Thanksgiving, but I felt a little guilty and I now I know why. And now at the moment I didn't. So I woke up, had a weird feeling that morning, kind of brushed it off, and me and my mom had decided we were going to pack lunches and pass them out to the homeless people that morning before we had our Thanksgiving activities. So we are in her car, and we are literally right by mine and Knight's old apartments. Literally our first apartment together in New Orleans. We are right by it when I get the call. And um, it's a sister, and she tells me that um, he had passed away. It was um, something that happened in the middle of the night. He just didn't wake up. Long story short, that's how I'm gonna phrase it because I truly don't know how to put it. Um, so I get the call and she's like, Jimmy, you need to let your roommates know. Um, you know, let Zach know, let Ashley know because eventually it's gonna come out. And I think Within an hour or two, TMZ had had the story, and it was just a whirlwind. Like we had just lost DM two weeks ago. I always think back of the Battle of the X's poster, the premiere poster. I'm standing in between Knight and DM. CT and DM wore black that season. Me and Knight wore black that season. It's just like you look back and the things that you remember and the signs that you kind of find. It's it's a lot to process. Um, but yeah, so the news is out. It's everyone kind of knows now. And we have to go to Wisconsin for a funeral. And a lot of people always wonder, like, why I kind of defend Jordan and take up for Jordan. I know a lot of Challenge fans do not like Jordan. Um, and some people, and I get a lot of backlash of why I have a close relationship with Jordan despite things that he said about me things that we've been through, things that he said about other people. Um, Jordan was one of the first people to call me when it happened, was one of the first people to book his flight to Wisconsin for the funeral, was there with me the whole time. So I just felt that people needed to know why I have such a connection with Jordan. It's because he was there through it all that day, one of the worst days of my life. Um, so yeah, it was Jordan, Brandon Nelson, Sahar, Preston, Camilla, Ashley, and Zach. That was the ones that were with me on the funeral. Those are the ones that were there. Um, and that's that's why me and Jordan are so close. I just felt like people needed to know that because people always give me so much shit about being cool with Jordan despite his bullshit. And that's why. I just feel better now that y'all know that. Um, so yeah, the funeral. It was, I think it's exactly what he would have wanted. Zach gave a beautiful speech. Preston gave a speech. Ashley forced me to give a speech. I was the last person to speak, and I am so thankful that she made me do that that day. I did not want to, but Ashley was in my ear the whole time, like, Knight would want you to do this. It's only right if you do this, and I'm so grateful that Ashley forced me to do that because it's exactly what I needed, and she knows Knight better than anyone. Like, her relationship with me and Knight, she knows us better than anyone, so I'm very, very grateful for Ashley that day and every day. Um, my favorite part of this is after the funeral, we all went to him and his dad's favorite bar, Mariah's in Kenosha. I love that bar. It's a little hole in the wall dive bar. And his dad just bought the whole bar shot and we did exactly what Knight would want us to do. We celebrated, we told his stories, we spent time together. Also Scooter, who used to work in production for MTV, the man that is in charge of the ship you should have shown episodes that y'all miss so much. He was there. I just have so much love and respect for the people that love Knight the most because they came and it was exactly what he would have wanted. Just all of his real life friends, his best friends from MTV, his family together celebrating, not mourning, but celebrating with a lot of seven and sevens. So yeah, I think that's what he deserved and what he wanted and it was 
the saddest day, but we still found beauty in it. And that's, anyone that knows Knight knows that he lived life to the fullest. That's one thing you say about Knight and Theo. They love to live, and we wouldn't be doing any one of them justice if we did not do that. So that's why I keep asking. Please just have a seven and seven in honor of him today. That's all that he would want. If you've never had a seven and seven, you're welcome. After you drink it, you can thank Knight for it. And I just really, really wanted to make this video because I just wanted to talk about him. I, I, the, the one thing I said to him at his funeral, it was like, I'll forever tell your stories. That's, that's the only thing that I remember saying in my whole speech. God knows what I said. But I was like, I'll forever tell your stories. And that's why I wanted to make this video. Like, I wanted y'all to know the crazy stuff that we had went through. Him leaving me on Christmas. Me donating all his clothes to charity. Like, those crazy stories are part of our story. And, like, I have never been in a relationship like that. I don't think I'll ever be in a relationship like that. That is a one in the, like, lifetime experience. It's like, I always say, you have a soulmate and you have a love of your life. You choose the love of your life, but the soulmate chooses you, and he will forever be my soulmate. The universe brought us together. I think that there was a higher power, the reason we both walked into that real world house that day. And it's hard that the story ended the way it did, but all you can do is just, like, continue to, like, keep their memory alive. Anyone that's lost anyone, tell their stories. Keep their memory alive. That's all they would want. And that's why it was important for me to kind of take a break from the fun that is Jimmy Explains It All and just be very real with y'all in this moment because I thought I think that's what he deserves. I think he deserves his stories continuously being told and just keep telling his stories. That's all I want. And I could talk about the grief and what it's like dealing with someone post-loss and how hard it was that next year of my life, but I'm not going to do that today. Today we're just going to celebrate him. I'm going to get up for making this video. I'm going to go have a lot of seven and sevens. I am going to be thankful for the four years that we had together. It, it, it's hard realizing he's now been dead five years, longer than I knew him on this earth and in this universe. But I strongly believe that you find people that you truly love in the next universe. And I know that he's going to be waiting for me with the seven and seven. So tonight, I never thought